Hey guys, welcome to today's video. We are reacting to Lady Gaga's makeup tutorial on the Sephora YouTube channel. So if you're new here, Hello, my name is Johnny. I've been a professional makeup artist for over 10 years. I am genuinely very impressed by House Labs, especially following the rebrands. It was kind of clunky before the rebrand, even though it felt more gaga with the black packaging, the studs, it was a little bit more edgy. But then she really went like the clean route and I was nervous at first because who knows where that was gonna go. But I have to say, so many of the House Labs products are genuinely stunning. And she posted a tutorial on the Sephora YouTube channel doing her makeup using obviously the new Triclone concealer. So I thought it would be super fun for us to watch it together and kind of use it as a teachable moment of just reacting to how she's doing her makeup and little tips and tricks of maybe what I love that she's doing to maybe explain and elaborate further or things I would do differently. I am a huge Lady Gaga fan. I have a big tattoo of her on my arm. I will not take my shirt off because I don't want to get demonetized without any further ado, let's dive into this Lady Gaga makeup tutorial. Hi everybody, this is Lady Gaga and I'm so excited for you to get ready with me. We are going to do a full face of house labs today. She is so wild to me. She is somebody that, to me, makeup completely changes her face. She is stunning without makeup on, but she is the prime example of the way sometimes they will do her eyeliner or if it's all blacked out and more smoky. She can go from so gorgeous, elevated, almost like Oscars, to this grunge, just fierce, intense thing. But I think her career and her music videos and now her makeup line, which is super exciting, is really putting on display, to quote Nikki Tutorials, the power of makeup. We're gonna get started with our Triclone Skin Tech Concealer in shade 11 light neutral. I have to say, so my friend Kevin, who co-hosts the Beautiful and Bothered podcast with me, he actually got me the concealer because I do not get PR from House Labs. That's fine. And he bought so many shades because he's like a psycho. He also still does bridal makeup, so I'm sure he's going to throw them in his kit. But he said he went on the Sephora app and he knew my foundation shade in the House Labs foundation. And he said there's a tool on the website that based on your foundation shade, it will tell you which one matches your complexion complexion and then which one would be good to brighten. He said these were the two, but then he had a bunch of other ones. So we were like sitting there swatching, trying, we were seeing which one was right. The two, the website said were my matches were perfect. Kudos to House Labs for like making the color matching process so attainable, especially in the e-commerce world we're living in nowadays. I'm going to start under the eyes and then I'm going to take the tip of the applicator and I'm just gonna kind of put it wherever I see redness on the face. Okay, that was a lot of pressure under the eye. Like, if you notice the way she was like literally shoving this in, no need to kind of scrape it on the under eye like that, but uh, I love that she's using it to spot conceal on the face before foundation. And since this really does have a beautiful dry down, kind of a quicker dry down, it really does stay where you put it. And doing it before foundation will actually keep it so that's dried down and then when you're putting the foundation on top, the problem area or the redness is already covered by the concealer. Opposed to putting foundation on and getting everything even, trying to cover it and then putting more concealer on top, because foundation is more emollient and thin, it's going to almost move around with the concealer on top, which is why most artists tell you even when you're doing your foundation to not bring it up under the eyes and to really leave that space free for concealer. So layering in this way for extra coverage is actually a great technique that she's doing the concealer before the foundation. Now I take our brush for concealer. It's a beautiful, beautiful brush that is shaped like a finger. Yes, it is, girl. Let me tell you, this may be the best concealer brush I've ever used. It really is shaped like a finger, which sounds insane to say. The density of this is perfect, and the slight roundedness to the top just fits perfectly in here to stipple over any problem area like a sponge, but it's not absorbing it the same way a sponge will to really build up the coverage. This brush is heavenly. This concealer has biotech caffeine in it which de-puffs under the eyes. Also, the fermented arnica that's in the concealer is helping reduce my redness while I wear it, which is 
one of my favorite things about it. There really is unbelievable ingredients in the foundation and concealer. I know in the concealer, the ingredients can actually depuff over time the more you wear it. Up until now, my favorite concealer for mature skin has been the NYX Bear With Me Concealer because this is so hydrating but not glowy. And I think a lot of glowy, glowy products can settle very easily where this is just hydrating beyond belief, but this really is more of a sheer to medium coverage. And me and Kevin on on our podcast said we were hoping when this launched that it was just a more medium to full coverage version of this and that's exactly what it is. I would rather use less of a more pigmented product than more of a sheer product because at the end of the day less is more. The less makeup I'm putting on somebody especially someone with more mature skin the better. I want to use less product so to be able to use a dot and really blend this out and it emulsifies but keeps the pigmentation and you end up having less product on is a huge win for me. I'm gonna be using now our Triclone Skin Tech Foundation in shade 110. And I want you to see just how amazing the payoff is on the skin. So that's always so interesting to me whenever anybody does like foundation reviews or whatever. Swiping something on in a streak and saying, wow, look at the coverage. Like I could do that with anything. When you're taking a little bit of foundation and spreading it far, if it's not a very copacetic formula that is going to have that blendability and that creaminess where it's maintaining that look and texture and it's not aggravating pores or settling in or showing problems coming through, that's the sign of a very beautiful formula. And I will say about the House Labs foundation, I love it on mature skin, but I will say this, it is a foundation foundation. My other go-tos for mature skin are the L'Oreal True Match Serum and I also love the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Tinted Moisturizer. Both of these can really be sheared out. With the House Labs it really does increase. It looks absolutely stunning. It does spread and emulsify but it keeps its pigmentation so strong that I really feel like House Labs is a foundation foundation. It's not something that you can do one or two dots and really spread or it's starts to lose what it's intended to do in a way. The formula doesn't quite work the same. It really is a more medium to full coverage that can't be sheared down as well as other foundations. Sometimes I use the rest on the brush just to get over my eyes. I always prime my lids with concealer, so I love that. Okay, so now I'm gonna add some warmth back in the face and I'm gonna use our Power Sculpt Velvet Bronzer. It's interesting to me that she is doing powder bronzer on top of wet skin. So we have the foundation and concealer on. It hasn't been set with a translucent powder, but we're going in with bronzer. So the issue with that for me is that when you have wet foundation or concealer and you go in with a darker pigmented powder like a blush or a bronzer, it's going to cling to areas of the skin that have more of that liquid on it, opposed to setting it and giving it that veil of translucent powder. And there is so many translucent powders that do not make you look cakey or heavy. The Huda Beauty, the NYX HD Studio, the Kimchi Chic Powder. What that does is it, after all of your liquids, your foundation, your concealer, if you end up doing cream, bronzer, or blush, that translucent powder is acting as a finishing a veil for all of your liquids and now you can go in with more powder products on top of that powder because it is almost like sealed off the liquids evened out the distribution of the liquids and given the skin the same texture. Opposed to going on top of wet skin with a brown bronzer or a blush, it can really end up looking patchy and be more difficult to blend. Cause you gotta think, the more you're trying to blend now, you haven't set that liquid, so you're just moving the liquid around more and more and more, so we'll see. I like to start my contour sort of towards the nose and then I bring it down. <laughs> Okay, we shouldn't be bringing it down. I don't know what she meant by that. When we're doing bronzer or contour, the way I always like to think of it, I bring it from the center of the ear, this little thingy right here, I don't know what it's called, down to the center of the mouth. And the reason that is, is because you're creating a shadow, you're sculpting to make this look more sunken in. Think. Angelina Jolie. But as you bring that down, you want to blend up and have it gradiating and feathering from that deep darkness into the blush and then into the brighter highlight because anything that's more bright is going to look more forward where obviously with bronzer or contour, it's going to look more sunken in, which is the look we're trying to achieve. So we should not be blending it down. I don't know why she said that. What's so nice about this 
powder is it doesn't even go on like a powder. It's extremely smooth and extremely easy to blend, just so you can see the difference. Okay, so she definitely didn't bring it down because it doesn't look like messy in that way. Maybe she just like misspoke. But I will say freezing it and looking at it, if you look right in here, you can see how she's having difficulty blending this because it's going on top of wet product. So that harshness here and the way that's looking all in here, that could be so much more blended if there was a layer of translucent powder down first. So now I'm actually going to go in with some blush, but I'm gonna make our blush today using some high power pigment paint. This is shade blush matte. So I have watched this once before and it was so funny because my friend Kevin said to me while we were watching this, he goes, tell me your powder blushes are sold out without telling me your powder blushes are sold out. And I'm gonna do something fun that I love to do, which is I'm gonna use our shade 000 Fair Neutral. It's a white foundation and I'm gonna mix just one pump on my hand with this blush matte paint. Okay, I love that they came out with a white foundation, not only for what she's doing as a mixing medium, but even people who are super fair <laughs> and use it. And I know she uses it in another way in this tutorial that is absolutely brilliant, which we'll get to that. But it's just such a great option to have as a mixing medium for these more creative reasons. Before I apply it, I'm gonna take a little bit of the white on my finger by itself. And I'm actually gonna put it on the highest points on my face just to add a glow without using any pearl. This is a great way to highlight the face for a really dewy look. Look at that. That is so brilliant. So I literally in the makeup tutorial doing this makeup look just reviewed the new one size powder and he made it in stage white. And I think that is the exact same concept where if you want to add a little bit of highlight to something without adding shimmer. It just gives you that lift without glow and shimmer if you really don't want it. I mean, you could use this to brighten the under eyes, especially if you're doing colored eyeshadow like this, using a white to set your primer or your concealer. A white like this is gonna make all the rich colors you end up using pop so much more and be more true to tone because it's like you're putting it on a white sheet of paper. So it's just gonna pop a lot more. Now keep in mind as well, we did just do powder bronzer. So we're doing liquid concealer foundation, powder bronzer, and now more liquid on top. So that can get a little hairy. So now I'm gonna take my finger and I'm just gonna make our blush on my hand. I'm just gonna put it here. And you see how now there's sort of a nice blending that's going on with the, both the bronzer and the blush. Okay, not the best blend, I will say that. It's interesting because it's like, there's not necessarily rules that need to be followed of what you can and cannot do, but putting creams or liquids on top of powders, if it's not really meant to do that, maybe like a cream blush or some cream bronzers do agree on top of powder, it could really just affect the long wear of the makeup where it's gonna look a little cakier and could possibly crease or just kind of fall apart quicker than if we reverse the order. So I'm gonna apply the Bioradiant Gel Highlighter now with my fingers. And I'm just gonna go on the cheekbone. You see how beautiful that glow is. Again, powder on top of cream. You can go down the nose if you want. I have a lot of real estate to put this on, on my nose. <laughs> I like to put a little in the height of my brow bone, sort of like an eyeshadow. She's so funny. Her joking around about her nose. It's making me want to watch A Star Is Born again, but I'm not in the mood to cry. I love how she's just doing her makeup with like her fingers, like on the brow bone. It's very effortless. Like so far, I will say I love just the like do what you want attitude. It's refreshing. Now I'm gonna take rose quartz and use it a little bit like a blush. Okay, so I have this highlighter. It's very beautiful. It really can be a blush topper, but holy texture. If you have a pore, you do not really want to pour that much of a highlighter on top of it because shimmer is really going to accentuate texture. And especially that that's going on top of, once again, unset liquid. I think it's just, oh God, it's just a texture nightmare. So now I'm going to start the eyes and I'm going to use our amazing high power pigment paint again in beige matte and just smooth it over the eyes as a primer. And I like a little bit more grip for the eyeshadow which this is gonna give me. So the only thing here that I'm questioning is that she 
put foundation on the eyelids ready to prime the eyes. So I prime my lids with concealer, but then that's it. And I just set it with a powder. It's just an unnecessary layer. You don't need to do foundation concealer and then do like an eye paint like that as a primer all over the lid again, because less is more. And the more layers you're adding, the more likely it is to crease and just start to look a little heavy. I am going to take some of my bronzer with that same brush, and I'm just gonna carve out my crease. You can do as much or as little of this as you want. I'm gonna pull that out just a little bit. See, just to create that line right there and it just lengthens out the eyes. Keep in mind that like this is why I normally start with the eyes because you can just take a makeup wipe and clean this up and be as kind of messy as you want, but you can see through this blending process, she has to be so careful as she's blending out that she doesn't go too low because she has her whole base on, where if you start with your eyes, you can just make a mess, do what you need to do, and then clean up with a makeup wipe. So keep that in mind as we keep watching. Okay, now I wanna keep ample this look a little bit more. So I'm going to be using this pigment paint in Cocoa Matte and also Rose Gold Shimmer. I'm just gonna blend it into my crease. And sometimes, just to give it some really good warmth and playtime, I just use my finger to blend it out quickly. And I just start to cut the crease a little bit on the side. Not sure why we did the bronzer if we're doing this. Now I'm going to use another one of our gel powder highlighters in chocolate opal. And I'm going to use this fluffy brush and just work it in to that same sort of creased area. Okay, we have a lot of products on the eye. We have foundation, the first matte eye paint, the second matte eye paint, a third shimmer eye paint, and now a powder highlighter. So it's taking a turn. You gotta keep in mind, this especially is a House Labs tutorial on the Sephora YouTube channel. Obviously Gaga as well has incentive. We're throwing everything but the kitchen sink. Make sure you use as many products as possible. And I just, I don't love that. Not that people are watching this to be like, like, oh, I'm gonna do my makeup exactly like that. But I just think it's, I don't know, it's a little bit of misinformation for the sake of squeezing as many products into this video as possible. We're getting a little off course here. I'm now gonna take our rose shimmer and pop it in the center of the lid. Love it. Oh my God, we're running out of things we could put on the eye. I'm going to take our concealer again to do something else that our concealer does, which is clean up. Drag it just under the eye in the shape that I want the shadow to be. And that's super easy to do. I don't know where to begin. Not only the amount of product, foundation, powder, bronzer, foundation again as the highlighter, then the foundation mixed into the blush paint as the blush, then powder highlighter. Now we're putting wet concealer on top of all of that. This is the thing, it's all about the wear and doing something like that. It may look nice within the first hour, but the wallpaper gonna start to peel because they're not meant to be layered and stacked like that. And again, that is why I start with the eyes. We could have just taken a makeup wipe and done this, opposed to getting your base perfect, then doing your eyes, having issues with the eyes where it gets too low or fallout, and then cleaning up the base. Just start with the eyes. You prevent having to do something like this. Now I'm going to sharpen up the eye using our Optic Intensity Eco Liner in Deep Cocoa Matte. I'm gonna extend it along the line that I just cleaned up, flip it over where there's a brush, and just blend away. Blend, blend, blend. Cleaning up. Clean up your mess. Interesting that we didn't do the liner and then clean up, because now again, we're just doing layers. We're doing layers. I love House Labs eyeliner pencils, though. They do not budge. They do not go anywhere. Super blendable, and I really do actually like that brush on them, because I do think it's super easy to smoke it out. And I'm gonna create a little bit of a point, like a little teardrop in the center. Blend it out carefully so that you can still keep the sharpness of the shape. See what I mean about her looking different? And I don't mean that, in, it's still her, but the ferociousness or the fierceness of her just is night and day when she has this kind of a makeup look on. It's wild. Before I put on my lipstick though, I'm going to use our setting powder. And this powder is amazing. Don't sleep on her. Girl, that's like nine steps too late. That should have been step two. Liquid powder, liquid powder, liquid powder. The other thing about that is too, unless it's a super lightweight finishing powder, like something like this, this is a new finishing powder from Bobbi Brown, where it has no coverage at all. And I understand that translucent powders don't have coverage, but they kind of dull products underneath in the sense that if you're 
doing your blush and bronzer and then you're putting your translucent powder on unless your intention is to really mute everything, which is what I like to do sometimes, but with a finishing powder like something like this or the ambient lighting powders by Hourglass to kind of just add that beautiful veil on top. Not only is it going to suppress the tone of the blush and the tone of the bronzer that you did. She was saying a lot through the whole process of like, you know, we're gonna add a glow to the cheek. We're gonna add a highlighter. So she added the glow from the white foundation, the blush kind of cocktail that she made. She had the actual highlighter. She had the second pink highlighter as a blush topper. Now, we're putting a powder on top of all that that is gonna matte everything out, that is gonna take all that glow away. Again, that's why steps matter in a way. If I put shimmer highlighter on my cheek and then put setting powder on top of it, she ain't gonna be shimmering anymore. Now to finish off my look, I'm going to start by using our eyeliner as a lip liner in shade Deep Cocoa Matte. I like to use this as a lip liner because it's so creamy and it comes with a little brush on the other side. It's also long wear, so now it's definitely not moving. I don't know why. It didn't even dawn on me that you could use their eyeliners as lip liners. Love that because I can attest the eyeliners are so good and don't budge. I do love that little brush on the other end to kind of feather even what I have on. I have a darker brown lip liner faded into a more pinky nude to kind of soften that edge and blend that in. And that's a stunning color. We're gonna use our Atomic Shake Lip Lacquer in sepia. I love this color so much. It's perfect for fall. Okay, A, that color combination is stunning. So those shakers, the reason she was shaking it is because it is one of the formulas that goes on and looks glossy, but it dries down somehow that it literally does not transfer, which you will see. I will say something like the Revlon, I believe the Revlon Colorstay inks, they don't need to be shaken and you don't need to let it dry down, which you'll see. The only thing about the house labs that's a bit of a pain, you really need to sit there for like, a good amount of time with your mouth just like not touching your lips together or it's gonna kind of not work so yeah all done let me show you my final look that lip oh. for the ultimate test of when you are wearing our atomic shake lip lacquer won't even get on your glass. Cheers to beauty. Wow, so, so interesting. I really love that she posted that. To just like watch someone of her caliber and status like sit down and do her makeup in a way that wasn't like, you know, Vogue at my mirror, putting like Himalayan uh, hibiscus under their eyes, like Gwyneth Paltrow. It felt a little bit more relatable, which was super nice. Obviously it's her brand and the pros of it was I, I do love how effortless it was. It really ended up being a beautiful look. Obviously there's things I would have tweaked. I think the cons are that we clearly just try to wear as many House Lab products on our face as possible. Also the layering was a bit of an issue. And even in the end, you can really kind of tell in the area with that bronzer, like that powder on top of that wet foundation was just, they did, they were not friends. This was super fun. Let me know in the comments if you guys like this style of video. I just love analyzing something like this. And like I said, using this a moment to just kind of like talk about the process and what I would do differently and things I love. And hopefully you guys get something out of that and maybe learn a different technique. I'm a visual learner. I have to see something. If someone is telling me something, my brain shuts down. So to be be able to see it makes such a difference for me. And you guys always watching people who can do their makeup very well. It's difficult because it's hard to almost translate it onto yourself sometimes because when you have a problem, you're like that YouTuber didn't film themselves having a problem. So how do I combat that? That's why I like this style of video because I think it kind of shows a more stripped back version of someone just doing their makeup a little bit more casual and being able to explain what maybe could have been done differently. So this is super fun. If you had a good time, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Turn those notifications on so you don't miss an upload. If you wanna know how I did the makeup look I currently have on, what I'm wearing, what these lips are, this is from my tutorial of a full face of hot new cruelty-free makeup and tools. So if you wanna know what is on this mug, just click right here. Binge away. See you next time.